So today we're here at the site of a Tesla supercharger, not yet completed, 15 V4 chargers. And this is in contrast to the last in this series, which covered Preston, which is an absolute desert when it comes to EV chargers. Preston is just two miles that way. So we're gonna be looking at the V4 chargers. I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Now, it seems to be a totally different strategy from Tesla. We've seen in the last video that we went round Preston and there's no real interest in putting in any decent number of chargers. The most we've ever found is four and the average is two and in some cases just one. So the area seems to be pretty devoid of chargers. So Tesla are here and they're building a new supercharger and there are 15 V4 chargers going in. There's 12 on that side and behind me, we're gonna have a look in a minute, there's three additional ones, one of which is a specific disabled bays. Now this surprises us, first of all, because Preston is a desert for EV chargers, but secondly, four miles down the road, down the M6, is uh, Charnock Richard Services. And there they have 12 Tesla V2 superchargers already. So while the rest of Preston probably doesn't have more than 20 or 25 chargers of all networks, Tesla will end up with 15 here, 12 there, 27 chargers in a much smaller area. So what is going on with the strategy? So what I'm going to do is just very quickly go over the location and explain why this might be so attractive to Tesla and why the others really aren't bothered. So you'll hear very faintly in the background, we've got motorways and this is a junction which is a fantastic junction of three motorways. There's the M6, north that way, south that way. So this is a main road from Birmingham right the way up to Scotland. Huge popular motorway, very, very busy. <clears throat> Going across country, we have the M65, and that goes from uh, just, just the Preston itself, goes right the way across, uh, past Burnley, into North Lancashire, and just on the edge of Yorkshire. So it's a busy junction. And a third motorway, which is the M61, branches off from the next junction, and that goes down to Manchester. So this is a massive central hub and we are about 400 yards off the motorway. That's all, but this is a hub. So you come off the motorway on the slip road, whichever way you're coming from, you'll come to a big central roundabout, you come down the Walton Summit Road, first left, first left, and you're here. So for travellers, for people on a road trip or business people, this is an absolutely brilliant location for chargers. So why is it different to Charnock Richards? Well, Charnock Richards has one disadvantage and that is the chargers there, the V2, there's 12 chargers, they are only on the northbound side. So if you're heading south from Scotland or the lakes, coming down to get to those chargers, you have to go past the, the services, off at the Wigan turn off, come back up the motorway, do your charge and come back up to here, turn around and go back down the motorway terribly inconvenient. <clears throat> so what this will do, this will allow people who are heading south uh, to be able to just stop here, one minute off the motorway. Now, for those coming north who can use Charnock Richard, they are the V2 chargers, and V2, most of you will know, are 150 kilowatts, and they're shared power. So 150 kilowatts is put into a bay, into two bays, and that will be shared. So if there's only one car in, in, in the two bays, you'll get the full 150 kilowatts. If there are two cars, it will cut it. Now it does share proportionately, gives more to the one with the lower battery than the other, but it does mean that if you're driving a Model 3 long range or a Model Y or a Model S, all of which are capable of 250 kilowatt charging, you're not gonna get your best rate northbound on the M6. So coming up another junction, it's just one more junction, uh, coming off at the M65 turn off and coming to here, you'll be getting the full 250 kilowatt charge. So that's going to split, split things up quite nicely. So for Tesla, this is a superb location. So what have we got going in here? Well, it's early stages, excuse my back, but what we have here are the power cabinets which have been delivered to site. And we're gonna go up and have a look at where these are going. We've got various containers with equipment in it. We've got a, uh, it's a little mini 
kitchen, uh, canteen, uh, fire extinguishers. It's fully kitted out. Uh, <clears throat> and a lot of the uh, ducting for the cables, it's all here. Now, if we look over this way, when we talk about deserts and oasis, we've had a massive storm here. I know everyone's had it right throughout the country, but here we got really badly hit. So you can see here, fences have been blown over, a couple of the signs have been blown over. This has really been devastated. But what's happened here is the crew came in, I met up with them before Christmas, and they talked me through the whole site. So what we have here, you'll be able to see at the back uh, with the lovely golden gravel, uh, there are 12 uh, ducts for the cables. So that's where the cables for the charges are coming in and the concrete's there already. All that happens is that when they're ready, uh, you can just see, I think we've got some close-up photos of this, but you can just see there are four bolt holes in the concrete. Now what they do with that is they screw in studs uh, quite long studs and they screw those in so they stick above the ground that much and then when they're ready to install they just lower the, the, the charger over the whole thing the cables pop up through and the studs pop up through so when they lower it down the studs will be popping up they just put a nut and a washer bolt it all down and it's installed. So the cables are through already and then they just plug in. Those cables will be where in the charger they're needed. So other places, they will, the power will be wherever it is. With Tesla, the power will come up exactly where it needs to be connected. So these are very, very quick to connect. So there's gonna be a total of 12 chargers going in here. With the V4 chargers, each of those has its own separate power supply, which is 250 kilowatts. It's a little bit more complicated for the technically minded. What they do, one of those cabinets will provide 1,000 kilowatts, and that will supply four chargers. So each of the chargers can quite happily get 250 kilowatts. So if all four have a demand for 250 kilowatts, they can supply that. Um, but that's designed so that the, the load is spread. So however many cars charge there, they're covered. So there'll be one of those cabinets for these four, one for the middle four, one for the end four. And then over here, there are three chargers going in. There's two at the back, you can see, and we'll walk around in a minute, and there's one behind the cables. Now, these are slightly different. They're still V4 chargers, but these two will be normal chargers. The end one is a specific disabled only bay. So this has a lot more space. It has the full width of the bay, and the cable for that is there. So this one specifically designed for disabled drivers, and there's not that many charges out there that are specifically designed, but that's, that's that one. So there'll be one cabinet for here. So again, 1,000 kilowatts will go in, uh, three chargers, 250 kilowatts each. So that's the system. Now the delay here, the ground crew have finished their job. They've got everything in, they've got the cabling in. Over in the back, you've got the concrete and you can see the ducts, which are the end of these pipes, uh, the ducting which comes out there. So those four cabinets are gonna be going over there. The ducting is already in, that's what the ground crew did. So what will happen is they will go in there, there'll be a hole at the end, which is the incoming power for the site. So the power will come in through there, into the back of the cabinet, then go out through the cabinet, out, four there, four there, four there, and three over there. So it's a lovely, neat installation. So when this is all finished, this will be re -tarmacked. The whole site here will be re and then it'll be all laid out in proper, proper bays. And the location is superb because just behind Jonas, we have the hotel. So let's have a look there. So what we have here is a Holiday Inn. Now this again is a good location. A lot of uh, motorway services have hotels, usually travel lodges. This is a Holiday Inn Express, and this is right next to the motorway. If we turn the sound isolation off, you'd hear the motorway cars. So what you have here is a lovely situation. You've got facilities in there. You can go in there, there'll be coffee, tea, there's lunches, there's restaurants, everything. If you want to stay, you can stay there and charge up uh, overnight. 
So this is a great location. So this is very different from what Tesla's doing to what everyone else is doing, because the others don't seem to look for these central locations, these hubs, uh, which are so important to Tesla. So that's it for now. So thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please click the like button. If you would like to see more, please click subscribe and click also the bell icon so we can notify you in advance of when we launch videos. So thanks for watching. I'm Dave.